Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Recon 5 mini long range 5 inch lightweight quadcopter. The first quadcopter that was recently released by a new company named Recon FPV, which is a result of a cooperation between Dave C, who is the original designer of this frame, and AJRC. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, test it using different types of batteries, and give you my feedback after testing it out. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you can find a quick start guide, some stickers, two high quality battery velcro straps, two sets of Gemfine Hurricane 5.1 inch propellers, two plastic antenna tubes, two carbon fiber supporting arms, spare 7 and 9mm long M2 screws, and a naked GoPro camera mount. As for the available options, you can choose between a digital version which comes with the Cadex Vista and Nebula Pro camera and an analog version which comes with the AJRC Zeus VTX and the Cadex Rattel T FPV camera. In addition, you can get the Recon 5 with multiple ready receiver options and you can choose between a 6S version which comes with 204 1800 kV motors and the 4S version which is the one I have and comes with 204 3000 kV motors. In terms of specs, besides the 204 motors which I've just mentioned, the Recon 5 features the AJRC F730 20x20mm 6S compatible stack, which is based on the 30A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC and an F7 flight controller. It's using an XT60 battery connector, which I'm probably going to change to an XT30 connector. On the back of the frame, mounted inside 3D printed TPU parts, you can find the AJRC M80, which is a cost efficient high quality GPS unit, the AJRC Hammer 14cm long LFCP antenna, and the AJRC Sauter, which basically means a savior, self powered buzzer. The camera unit is mounted inside this high quality 3D printed TPU part, which will also enable you to mount an action camera on top of it. And over here you can find a very useful Immortal T antenna mount which will enable you to adjust the antenna position. As for the Recon 5 frame, which is also available separately, its wheelbase is 210mm. It features a dead cat pattern, so the propellers are going to show slightly on your FPV feed and won't appear at all on your HD footage. The thickness of the carbon fiber arms is 4mm. The thickness of the side supporting arms which I recommend to install as they are going to reduce the jello and improve the durability of the frame is 3mm and the carbon fiber arms are based on these two individual plates which are secured to the bottom plate using these two bolts. I recommend it to HLRC slash record FPV to include a tool that will enable you to fasten these two bolts as my arms came a little bit loose and I had to improvise some tools in order to secure them. In terms of weight, the digital version of the Recon 5 weighs 224.4 grams including the side supporting arms and about 218 grams without them. The weight including a GMB 1100 mAh 4S LHV battery which should provide you with between 5 to 10 minutes of flight time depending on how you fly is about 316 grams. The total weight including the Flyway Explorer 4S lithium ion battery pack which should provide you with between 12 to 25 minutes of flight time again depending on how you fly is about 422 grams. Including the provided action camera mount which by the way doesn't fit the SMO 4K camera the total weight is 261.5 grams. And including the Insta360 ONE X2 camera which I also tested in this video the total weight is almost 380 grams. As for setting up the Recon 5, after installing your own radio receiver or binding the radio receiver with your radio controller in case you have one of the Bind and Fly versions, activate the Cadex Vista in case you have the digital version, then connect the flight controller to your computer, open up Betaflight and configure your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. As for the other settings, everything is pre-configured for you. Here you can see how the port section is configured. So the configuration slash MSP switch is enabled next to your 4 which is connected to the Cadex Vista. The GPS is enabled on your 2 and the serial RX switch is enabled on your 1 which is in my case connected to the Crossfire Nano SE receiver. Under the configuration tab, the bidirectional dish shot switch is enabled. The motor direction is reversed, so pay attention to it when installing the propellers. The maximum arm angle is set to 180 degrees, which means that you'll be able to arm your quadcopter regardless of its orientation. Here you can see how the GPS unit is configured. And by the way, by default, the telemetry output is going to be turned off, and I recommend to turn it on 
in order to enable you to recover your drone, hopefully in case of a crash, by logging the GPS telemetry data to the OpenTX telemetry logs. In addition, here you can see the power and battery configuration and the PID tuning, which is different from the default one, so this quadcopter comes pre-tuned for you. Last but certainly not least, pay attention that by default the GPS rescue option is going to be enabled under the failsafe tab and the LR arming without fix switch is going to be enabled, which means that in case you are going to arm the quadcopter without the GPS fix, the GPS rescue option is not going to be enabled, and in case you are not familiar with the Betafly GPS rescue feature, I recommend to check out my recent guide. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Recon 5 with and without an action camera and using different types of forest batteries. As you can see, I replaced the XT60 battery connector with an XT30 connector because the batteries that I'm using are using an XT30 battery connector anyway, but according to Dave C, in case you're going to get the 6S version, stick to the XT60 battery connector because otherwise you're going to push the XT30 battery connector to its limit. As for the performance of the Recon 5, not surprisingly, since it is using very powerful 204 motors, which should provide you with over 1 kilogram of thrust per motor, this is a very powerful setup that is not only limited for carrying naked GoPro cameras, so you can even get close to 5 minutes of fly time while carrying an Insta360 ONE X2 camera, so it easily outperforms the micro long range 4 inch quadcopters and even the recently released Flywheel Explorer. However, it comes with the cost of being a heavier, less quiet, and less efficient setup. Having that said, soon I'm going to bench test the AGL or CILS 2004 3000 kV motors using my motor's thrust end, so I am going to compare it with different propellers, and maybe for example using bi-bladed 5 inch propellers is going to be more efficient. As for the other features of the Recon 5, I really like this antenna mount that enables it to adjust its position, so ideally for long range flights you will need to position the antenna in this manner, so you'll have less chances of losing radio connectivity. The front 3D printed TPU camera mount with the integrated adjustable action camera mount is a great idea. The AGROC M80 GPS unit performed well, I got a very fast GPS lock, and in an open area I got constantly 13 satellites, which is more than enough. In addition, the frame looks well constructed, and as for this self-powered buzzer, which will require you to press this button for 3 seconds each time that you unplug a battery, I think that it deserves an upgrade, as it doesn't feature a built-in LED, and in my opinion it is not loud enough, so I could only hear it from a couple of meters. One more thing regarding the performance, as you are not going to see in the following flight footage, because in this video I only included the HD camera footage, the walls a little bit jello, which I suspect caused by the winds, as the weather hasn't been great for the last couple of days, so I think that because this is a lighter setup, it doesn't handle winds well as traditional 5 inch builds. One more thing before wrapping up this video with some flight footage, you should note that Recon FPV offers a FELSAF insurance plan which is applicable only when purchasing one of the ready-to-fly versions directly from them. It costs between $20 to $42 based on the version that you are getting, and basically it will enable you to get 50% off the exact version that you've got based on the DVR that you are going to send to them in case you are going to lose your drone. Whether it's a good option or not, I think that you should decide for yourself, do the math, and in case you think that you are going to lose your drone, maybe if you have some extreme plans in mind, maybe it's a good option, and otherwise, maybe it's not. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.